Ed Hill, what's going on, man? How you doing? Filmmaker, film director, med school student. How you living, man? I'm living good, man. I'm just trying to, you know, stay afloat, stay positive, stay focused. But overall, I'm feeling good. Uh, quickly, just want to say we appreciate you coming out. I know we yeah. try to get this together one time, but right, right. it ain't, you know, ain't happening. But again, yeah. we're very happy you're here with us today. Yeah, no, thanks for having me. For real. So let's get, let's get straight into it, man. Um, can you tell us more about the Ish Project and what that, like, what that surrounds? Yeah, so, uh, so first the Ish Project, it started out as like kind of a three-parted uh, nonprofit organization. Uh, I wanted to do uh, volunteer, community service, um, and filmmaking, um, all, all kind of under one umbrella. Um, I still want to do that at some point with the project, but right now I'm focused really on the content aspect of it. Um, so I've made two films, um, I've done some photo shoots, um, and it's all around health and wellness, okay. um, focusing on really health and wellness in black and brown communities, um, and really just bringing out, you know, issues that we face, um, and talking about them in different ways. So. I get the, yeah. ish, the issue. Well, <laughs> that's funny. I never thought about that, but it's really so. The ish project stands for the infinite steps to health. Okay. Um, really, because it's you know it's it's an ongoing journey, you know. Yeah. So never ending. Yeah. Yeah, we're really big on wellness and health over here. Oh no, yeah, for sure. But oh, so the ish project is yours. Like, like mm -hmm. you are the founder. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Okay. Um. When or how did when did that the idea of the Ish Project start going? Like yeah. In your head? So I actually I had an idea about a film first. Um, it was a uh, my first film called Black Health Is, okay. and that's actually where I met Dr. Brandy. Um, she was a physician I reached, well, uh, you know, a health clinician that I reached out to, and you know, asked if I could ask her some questions. Um, she was totally for it. Um, but in the midst of making that, I, you know, I was talking to friends, I was talking to production companies um, and trying to figure out like, what was the best direction? I had never made a film before. So I was trying to figure out like, which direction should I go? How should I, you know, kind of execute this plan, this idea? Yeah. Um, and one of my good friends, he was just like, you should make something that lasts, you know, longer, you know, not just make the film and be done. You should make something that you can build off of after this um and kind of find a way to like give back you know um so at that point i was like okay i guess you know making a organization would be kind of sweet so you know i went through that process and like i did that um and now you know i got the ish project and about to you know try to take it to new heights new levels you know as one as one should aspire to right right but making a film isn't isn't cheap man so it's not <laughs> How did you do it to, to get some funds? Yeah, so the first time I did crowdfunding, okay. which was super duper tedious. <laughs> like I'm talking, I reached out to every single person I knew on social media, everybody in my phone. Like I was just every hitting contact. up everybody, like hitting up everybody. Um, and I was able to raise around $5,000. Um, and that's how I carried out the first one. But then through my connection with uh, Dr. Brandy, I just told her, you know, I was interested in making a film um, and I told her I was, you know, trying to raise some funds for it. And specifically, I wanted to work with her, you know, as a therapist. Um, and she was like, yeah, the Diane Morgan group, we got you like we're going to cover it. So I'm like, OK, <laughs> like so. Yeah. So I'm like the second time it was super easy. I'm like, wow. Like, you know, what I'm saying just like getting over that threshold. But yeah. So that's so how that went from the first from the first film to the second film. What would you say were areas that you fixed before going into it? Um, definitely planning. Um, just, you know, making sure I knew what shots I wanted to get and like as detailed as possible, um, knowing kind of the format of the film. Um, and then really like the team I would work with, you know, the first time the team was, it was a little smaller, um, really just like one person less smaller. Um, but I didn't know the guy, one of the guys that I was working with. So it was kind of like, it was a challenge in that way, like getting to know somebody while, you know what I'm saying? And we, you know, we kind of bumped heads every now and then. Cause it was this, you know, it was, this is my first project. I'm a, this is my baby. You know what I'm saying? And like, Creative differences. you know what I'm saying? So, uh, 
going into this the second project i knew exactly who i was working with and like what they would bring to the table you know and kind of what i needed you know filling in gaps so yeah that was that was the biggest difference i got you so you're also a director mm -hmm. what would you say is the director's biggest challenge when when filming these kinds of things i would say communication communication for sure yeah just being able to communicate what it is that you want um and letting people know in a way that like you're not like a dictator but yeah. you're still a team member you just you kind of it's like almost like a coach you know but you're like it's like different than a coach because you're not coaching anybody on how to do their job you're just trying to let them know like okay maybe we can do it this way um i kind of see this vision maybe even ask them like what do you think about this but at some you know sometimes you just got to let them know like this is what i want yeah, like just, let's uh, just get it done yeah all right. all right uh why not film school man i know you right now you're a first year uh medical school, medical school student yeah. grads thank you uh but why not film school yeah so you know if, if i'm being completely transparent i feel like there as far as representation goes like we need more black people to be physicians mm -hmm. you know like my whole i guess brand is what you'll call it is health and wellness you know what i'm saying so i want to be on the i guess the the highest level of health and wellness that i can be mm -hmm. so that i can make you know more impact later um and also just to show that like being a, a black person in the field of medicine can be more normal you know what i'm saying like um and i feel like in film we see more representation of black people okay. you know so it's like i do want to reach, I guess, high heights with film. But I think as a clinician, I will be able to make more of an impact in the health and wellness space. Okay. You know. So you're using the, the film space to kind of break into something that's already that already has a, a nice a nice but an already like established community. But essentially yeah the physician thing you're trying to break into what's not as big as a community yeah essentially kind of you know kind of break some grounds you know and because uh, even like mixing the two worlds is like pretty unheard of you know like you got black physicians it's not like none exists yeah. but they're not in the space of like arts or you know what i'm saying they're not it's not common for black physicians to kind of be intertwined with like the culture in that way you know so film and media yeah exactly Exactly. Be good. Be good. Um, These have been good questions for sure. Appreciate that. What what film was it that got you thinking differently about movies that made you be like, okay, I want to go out and shoot something? Mm -hmm. hmm. It can't even be a show. It doesn't have to be a movie. <sighs> well, honestly, Euphoria oh, really? was like a yeah. Euphoria was huge for me. Um, that gave that like inspired like, oh, I can make something a little different. You know yes. and it doesn't have to be a traditional like the setup doesn't have to be traditional or like i can just play around you know that was like one of the first shows that i was like okay that's sweet um but i was actually most inspired by lauren hill's miseducation album okay. like not even a, a show it was just a, that her uh, her album it was like the way she formatted it was she would sing the song and, and in my opinion like it all went in order of like different facets of love like she talked about love from different angles and then after she had like an exit interview where like it was like some students like they were like little kids and they were like being interviewed and like there was a teacher and he asked them like questions about love and like they had answer and like it was like super organic you know what i'm saying but it like you saw it was like you saw the whole thing playing out you know what i'm saying so that was like my biggest i was like i want to make film in a way she made the album all right, so so your style is more organized, has a uh, yeah, just organized mm -hmm. that has a nice uh, how do I say this like nice put away ending. Yeah, I, I, that's or like either an ending or an intro. Okay. Yeah, so the first uh, the first film I focused on the outro. Like I had a I had, what was it three of my friends, and we basically set up the classroom similar to the album. But in the second film, I made sure I, f I focused on like the intros. I like tried to make like uh, 
I try to make like mini music videos, right. you know, to kind of set the tone of like, this is the energy of this topic. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, top, top 10, top 10, no, or even five okay. uh, shows. Top five shows. So, okay. All right, that'll make it a little easier. I can't, I'll put you four in there since I mentioned that. Um, Space Jam. Space, the original? Or yes, the original. Yeah. That was one of the sweetest movies. Like, yeah. mixing animation. You know, the way they did it was, it was... It was clean. I still haven't really seen nothing like that. Yeah. Like, that's clean as they did it. Like, I don't no. know why they don't do it more. That's what I'm saying. Like, I don't know. It was sweet. How they you did that for real. The new Space Jam was too overly graphic like like the graphic was too of I, I ain't gonna lie i need to watch it yeah i heard it was bad and i was like yeah i don't even want to be mad because space jam was like one of my like favorite movies yeah, like true. ever even like the little like uh little villain monsters were like, <laughs> funny and goofy what yeah. wait you talking about in the original in the original oh yeah not nah, okay i don't know what the other ones was like uh, i think that now they're like absurd like overly tall Oh really, man? I, I didn't watch. I, I watched like <laughs> first, like some random part of the movie. Yeah. Playing on, on my TV. Okay. But I, I didn't like sit down and watch it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I heard it was bad. Like I just heard it wasn't as good as the first one, which I'm not surprised. The first one was legendary. Like you can never re remake Space Jam, honestly. You big fan of uh, animated films? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Even cartoons, like just yeah. in general. Like I grew up watching every car i know all like almost all the cartoons that came out in the, the late 90s and the early 2000s Damn. i'm confident on that yeah um i don't, I don't want to test you but like go ahead uh, no i was low-key saying it so you <laughs> man um thundercats dang that's one so you got me on that but that, i right. feel like that was early i feel like that was early yeah, that like was, that was like that was, late 80s maybe early 90s yeah Looney Tunes for sure. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. I was a big Cartoon Network uh, adult Kids swim. Next Door. Kids Next Door. Oh, oh yeah, Kids easy, Door. easy. Yeah. Uh, Samurai Jack. Samurai Jack. Dang, I forgot about Samurai Jack. He was raw. Uh, Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. That one was so random to me, but I used to watch it. You remember that one character named Cheese? I do. What's <laughs> 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 bro doing? <laughs> Nah, I used to, my favorite was Hey Arnold, for real. Hey Arnold. Hey Arnold was so goaded, yeah. Recess. Oh, Recess was nice. Yeah. I, I think, like, an old episode uh, resurfaced because of, like, the whole Bitcoin thing that happened oh, for real? back. And, yeah, essentially, like, what they did on the playground with, like, all the fake, like, fake uh, baseball cards. Yeah. They did used to do that, yeah. Yeah, they used baseball cards as currency in the show. Okay. And, essentially, it... It came into like correlation with what's what was happening with Bitcoin. Oh, that's crazy. That's kind of dope. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah. That's, that's, that's like some dope. Simpsons like yeah. type of stuff. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, that's no, crazy. Yeah. I like the movie. Like, yeah, the Simpsons movie. No, the Recess movie. I haven't seen that in a while. I just remember it being good. Yeah. No, nah, I know uh, the Rugrats movie was really good when they went to Paris. I didn't watch that. Yeah, one. that was. I actually saw that in theaters. Did you? Yeah, I remember that was. That was the first. I, yeah, that was yeah, that was dope. Uh, do you remember? Uh, it was called Jetix. 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 It, it was more. It was cartoon as well. Okay. But it was uh, kind of like for cable. I don't think I saw that. No. Like, what what network did it come on? Uh, man, I can't even tell you. Yeah, because I, I saw it like. Yeah, I didn't really see a lot of cable networks unless it was like Boomerang or like, you yeah, know what I'm saying? Boomerang had some. They did. Bowwinkle. What was that? Bowwinkle. Oh yeah. Yeah. The, the, the moose. The moose and the, the beaver. I saw the movie for that. Really? I had a movie of that. Oh, that's so random. <laughs> like, <laughs> no. movie yeah. But that's when they mixed animation in uh, real life too. Where? Oh yeah, they did do that. Yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah. 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 It's another example. Not as clean as space. Right, 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 right. Yeah. So Tom and Jerry is, is one of the greatest shows ever. Classic. Like, they really didn't talk at all. And, like, you was, like, locked in. Yeah. <laughs> it was all smoke. No, all smoke. Low key. The whole time. Low key. The whole time. <laughs> Man. Yeah, no, that was. 
Yeah, yeah cartoons and, is cool, dude. Love, love cartoons. Yeah. Now and then, like, sometimes a show won't do it, just pop on some cartoons. No, nah, straight up. Yeah, like, I probably didn't really start watching normal TV regularly, like shows, until I was, I want to say college. Yeah. Yeah, high school, I would literally just go to the crib and just, like, listen to music, put the TV on mute, and just watch, t like, you know what I'm saying? Because yeah. I had already probably seen that episode or whatever. So it was like I had to do it in a different way. Okay. Yeah. It was like a rerun? Yeah, it'd be like SpongeBob or something. Oh, okay. And I just like, or like, uh, what's that show? Uh, it's a random show. Ah, ch not Chowder. Bro, that was, that was Chowder was weird, <laughs> but it was good. Yeah. Uh, this show is weirder. Uh, it also came on Cartoon Network. I forgot the name of it. They had a few of those, like yeah. Yeah. Flapjack. Flapjack. It was that one. Yeah, that it was, was so weird. That one was weird. <laughs> it was so weird. Like the parts where they would just like, like zoom in on the thing, and it would be like weird. Real again. ugly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Super detailed for no reason. Like, bro, who? <laughs> <validated> <laughs> that yeah, that show was crazy. Man, it was like a yeah. It was like SpongeBob on steroids and. All types of drugs. <laughs> that was the only show I was like, maybe they should take this one off. Yeah, it, it got too far. Like they got too weird. Yeah. Yeah, they got too weird. Oh, man, I feel like after Flapjack, uh, cartoons started going like weirdly downhill. <laughs> they became like all the same. Like the animations all became the same. Like, uh, like Rick and Morty. I like Rick and Morty though. Yeah. It's a good show, but it's it's all the animations that. And uh, it's another one like Bojack something. Mm, I've heard of it. You know, and then it's like uh, another one that's like it's like his hormones are talking to him or something. Like they're all they all look the same. Uh, I think I know. What you you know what I'm talking? It's on Netflix. Yeah, Big Mouth. Big Mouth. Yeah, it's like they all look the same. And I'm like, why? No, why is nobody making new? You know, looks or yeah. I mean, I think maybe it's just originality. Like. Everybody's used so many. Yeah, it's hard to claim an original one. Yeah, I think you know that is interesting. You say that because I feel like today everybody's trying to do what's like normal or like what like what's popular, what gets a lot of attention, so other people will copy it. You know, like that's kind of like the the media realm we live in, and it's like, can we just try different stuff? Like we don't got to stop originating stuff. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think it is. I mean, I feel like even, I mean, I, I'll vote for that, like, uh, yeah. like fashion trend or like shoe trend stuff Man, like that. what? Like nobody, yeah, everybody, it's because I feel like Instagram, you know, like, mm -hmm. I think Instagram is a good thing, but it also like, it takes away the originality. Yeah. You know, like everybody's going to have a style, you know, but it's like now it's like everybody, people are like copying each other. Yeah. Yeah. You, you see so many people with the same outfit at some point you're gonna be like this isn't this isn't original anymore yeah and things change so fast yeah like what was cool last spring is no longer cool oh man last last yeah. summer i think it was the the dunks the five inch yeah uh, five inch team shorts and then like yeah, yeah and the graphics cool it's not cool no more and with a chain i'm like i'm i'm getting ready to wear that you know what i'm saying i didn't i didn't put in you know some work to try to figure out okay let me I like that style, so it's past that now. It's past that. I'm like, I don't even know what the new thing is. I feel like we all just waiting, really. To just see. Yeah. Yeah. New York, I'm sure somebody in New York knows. Oh man. They always know. New York fashion is crazy. Crazy. I mean, New York Fashion Week? I never yeah, I never been or anything. No, me either. I was just seeing on like social media. Yeah. Yeah, yeah they, they don't try. <laughs> right, right. They ain't got nothing else to do but look at each other's outfits. <laughs> <laughs> no, this was like New York, but right? Nah, yeah, nah. Nah, nah, yeah. They they gotta look good because they on foot. You exactly. know what I'm saying? We get nice cars and have yeah. a basic outfit on. They just get a gas expensive outfit. <laughs> right? No <nah>, facts. <laughs> Big facts. It's either like a nice outfit, or like that gas. <laughs> no, <laughs> low key. No, nah, I swear. That's really how it goes. That's funny. Nah, yeah, I heard someone talk about that. I was like, hey. <laughs> that's a good point. Yeah, and I'm thinking about like I never thought about it like that, but yeah, like gas yeah, over a you, whole summer. That's you get like some nice pair of fours or like no nah, facts. <laughs> you gonna save that money up in a, in a in a month and got some nice shoes for real, like nah, yeah, something. <laughs> but 
Yeah, New York fashion is very interesting. Yeah, it's interesting. What's your, what's your take on fashion? Fashion? Man, I'm not gonna lie, I'm still, I'm really in the midst of finding my, my style. Yeah. You know, I feel like I got like three styles that like, I can really like hone in on. I think I can go for like the preppy look, okay. but then on the other extreme, like streetwear, and then just like super like clean, like kind of like business casual, like okay. like a suit on for real, but like maybe a t-shirt underneath. All right. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if that's business casual, but yeah. I feel like those are like my three styles. What is it like a like a nice uh, sports jacket? Or, yeah, uh, I'm blanking on what it is. Like a nice coat. Yeah. I mean, I think that, that that's a sports jacket, I feel like. Yeah. Yeah. But I feel like that might be along the lines of preppy, too. Mm, yeah. But that's like a different type of prep, I feel like. That's like clean prep, like luxury prep. Man, I would like to do is wear like oversized the car shirt. I feel you. That's, 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 that's really, man. that's my, that's the second one. That's the active wear for me. Yeah. yeah. I think that's, that's it for me. That's cool. I'm not trying to. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, that's cool. I feel like that's the that's my most comfortable self, oh, yeah. for sure. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but as far as just like you know, kind of looking good, or you know, yeah. maybe going to an event, you know. It always feels nice to just like dress up, like they go, do. go somewhere. They do. Nice, yeah. nice haircut, fresh haircut. Right, man. man. What? Yeah, nah. We feel like a whole different person yeah, until that hair start growing back. Straight to Target after. <laughs> Ah, that's a target. Get them good t-shirts. <laughs> Is there a certain scene in general? From it could be from any show. Mm. Uh, that's your favorite. Or you just like loved it. So I like romance movies oh, and yeah? stuff. Yeah. Um, I'm thinking about two. And uh, loving basketball in the notebook. I haven't seen either. For real, bro. You got if you like romance in any type of way, which I'm sure you do. It, it, I mean, they're nice every now and then. I'm not gonna lie. I feel you. You like you can't overdo it. it yeah. You definitely can't overdo it. But loving basketball, I like. I grew up playing basketball, so like that was for me. That was like my two loves. You know, what I'm saying women in basketball. It's like a yeah. uh, love story through basketball. That's beautiful. Um, I like that that movie's good, but one the moment that stood out in that was when um the dude, the main character, um he got into it with his girl, but they was at a party, he was drunk. He was like a college uh athlete. He was like, you know, he was pretty popular on campus, you know what I'm saying? He kind of lost track of himself. And he was just wasted, like his girl was so mad at him, you know what I'm saying? I was like, I was like, it's over. Like he he's no way he can come back from this. Like it ain't nothing he can do. He didn't he didn't just mess up, you know. But they end up still, you know, finding their way. So I was like, oh, that's beautiful. So that stood out. And then the notebook when uh at the end, right? So the whole movie, you seeing like these young people like, you know, doing their thing and like, you know, having their romantic hiccups and stuff. And then you every now and then you will see like some old people in the movie. And you're like, who are these old people? Like, why are they showing them? And then at the very end, like they show, am I bad if I'm spoiling it? Yeah, all right. He's like, I'm not watching it anyway. <laughs> I've had time to watch it. Right, right. <laughs> so she, he, like the dude was like reading a story to the lady. And like, I guess she had dementia. Oh, okay. Yeah. So like, she didn't know who these people were that he was reading to her. And like, he ended up, like at the end, I think they were all his letters to her. Oh, yeah, but her mom like kept him away because she didn't want him to her to be with him. So he was reading all the letters. So we see in the whole story, the letters were the whole story of the movie. And then at the end, you find out oh, it's these old people that we've been watching this whole time, and then they like died together. And I'm like, that was like, I cried, bro. I ain't gonna cap. It sounded like a good movie. Man. It was good, bro. The way they set it up, I'm like, that was wrong. I'm gonna go watch it now. It, it's good, even though I told you, you was still you. Were, yeah, it was good. So it's an effect. Hmm? So it's like the, that power. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, for sure. Man. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, that was, that was my movie. I think I like the like the Fast and Furious movies. Okay. Like the old ones, the uh, Tokyo Drift. And yeah. I forgot which one. 
I ain't okay. Well, I think it might be the second one. I couldn't. It was it was just too many, man. Like once they got to like uh, yelling out "dumb" and like <laughs> flying the car, I was like, "This is control." This is gone. Yeah. No, I never even. Re- I saw probably like one or two. Did you? Yeah. I like action movies though, but Fast and Furious never really. Nah. Yeah. I, don't know, I just feel like it was a like a perfect for like like just teen to like cars. Yeah. I, it's tough because I, I was a teen at one point that liked cars. And you just didn't like it? Fast and Furious just wasn't, yeah, it didn't hit home. I, I, yeah. I, I enjoyed it. Yeah. I feel like it had a lot of, I feel like the first few had a, a funnier moments. Yeah. Like that one clip where, what's the name? I forgot who asked him, but someone asked like Paul Walker, he was like, so what you going to do now? It's probably like, ludicrous. Nah, it wasn't nah, okay. There was a guy who like had one broke. You know what I'm talking about? Nah. No. Nah. He had like a big scandal on Instagram. He was like, I'm broke or something. <laughs> he it was a like, Tyrese, was it? Uh, yeah, it was him. <laughs> he went on IT Live. He was like, I'm broke. He Terry always Ryan. crying. <laughs> it was, it was oh, Tyrese. that's funny. And then he was like, So, Brian, what, what you gonna do? Yeah. Or, like, something about money. He was, <laughs> and then like it zoomed in on Paul Walker. He was like, Forget about it, cuz. <laughs> Let your man go, huh? Drop it, I don't want to talk about it. Drop it, hell? I want to hear about this, homie. I said forget about it, cuz. <laughs> no, that is funny. <laughs> yeah. Hey, right, rest in peace, Paul Walker, man. Oh, yeah, man, rest in peace. Yeah, that's funny. Yeah, I like, I like war movies. Oh, do you? Yeah. Uh, you watch Red Dawn? I haven't seen Red Dawn, huh? Movie's a bit old, but... Yeah. Good. I really got into war movies over the pandemic. Okay. Yeah, because I was watching, um, I was on Netflix and just, I would I see, uh, not Extraction. That was a good action movie, but it wasn't one, it really wasn't a war movie. Uh, Fall of Olymp, uh, Angel Has Fallen. Olympia Has Fallen? No, nah, it's Angel Has Fallen. Angel has yeah, fallen? but it was a, it was a sequel to Olympia Has Fallen. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, that was really good. Um, it was another, it was a few war movies I saw. I forget, yeah, I forgot all the names, but they were good though. Yeah. Like, most of them were good, yeah. What's the one with, with uh, Brad Pitt in it? That's, uh. I actually don't know. No? Uh, that was a good one. I remember seeing that too. I remember it being a good one. Yeah. I'm trying to think of what the one you're talking about. I don't remember. Yeah. Uh, did it have. Uh, what's his face? The dude who was in Transformers. Like first Transformers. Not Shia LaBeouf. Well, Shia LaBeouf wasn't in the movie with Brad Pitt? I thought he was, right? I don't remember. Yeah. I, I don't know if I've seen the movie, that's why. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That was a good movie. The big uh, Love and War, Love and War uh, movie guy. I like, I like, yeah, I like, yeah, maybe I'm just, it's about the dynamics, yeah. But I like, I like, like, <laughs> I like, like, crime movies too. Crime like, movies? no, crime, oh, like, crime. yeah, like, um, <laughs> <laughs> nah, like uh like uh what is that uh den of thieves that like cool. bank robbery movies if they can re- like really make a good bank robbery movie i'm like okay it was at the end that was that nice. end was hard that's why i liked it too because it was like a war yeah. like when when they got loaded like ready and like was loading up their guns i'm like I, I felt like i was in the movie yeah. like i was imagining how i would be in that moment like I'm like, oh yeah, we about to go to war. Like, we out, we out. When we're they out. when they start shooting in traffic, I'm like, oh, this is yeah. I just saw a clip of that the other day. With, like the dude who got like the, the big like the big old gun out. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was hard. Yeah, that was yeah, that was raw. I was like, oh, they he shot him through the uh, through the truck. I was like, oh, that's hard. Like, yeah. I remember that being a good movie. It was. I mean, he was like, uh, loose lips sink ships. Right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah, he the plot twist was crazy. I didn't expect that. Ice Cube sounds really good in that. He was, yeah, he was. I didn't expect that. Man, so I know you gotta get out of here pretty soon. Uh, but real quick, what does wellness mean to you? Uh, for me, wellness is um, really it's consistency, you know. Um, and when you kind of feel yourself falling from that consistency, or like feeling feeling yourself falling from kind of you know your baseline then it's like being able to like knowing it i guess knowing what to do to bring yourself back okay. you know what i'm saying so it's like 
I feel like there are certain things you can do to keep that consistency um, for the most part, like, you know, taking vitamins. Um, that's a big thing for me. Like yeah. taking vitamins is important. Like I didn't realize it till I started taking vitamins, like for real, for real. Which ones are our top tier? So, we need? so ironically, so I was listening to um, a Big Sean song and he mentioned that he had like a heart problem oh, God. and then his doctor prescribed him magnesium. He was like a holistic doctor. Um, and a, he's actually here in Michigan, Dr. Brownstein. Okay. Um, and he said, take magnesium. He said his heart problems essentially went away. Um, so I was like, what's this magnesium? So I looked it up. Um, it's a good muscle relaxer. So like if you have like, if your muscles are tense and like after you work out or something, or just in general, yeah. um, it also helps you sleep. Um, so magnesium is really good. Um, obviously vitamin C, um, African American specifically, we got to take vitamin D cause we get deficient in the winter. Okay. Um, cause you know, the sun doesn't get through melanin, like melanin doesn't allow vitamin D to like essentially soak up as well in the, uh, you know, when the sun is low. Um, uh, what else? I take zinc, you know, I feel like it's like just good for men. Um, what else do I take? Sometimes I'll take B3, you know, my cholesterol was like a little high, um, but it's also another name is for it is niacin and it like flushes you out. Um, but that's good for cholesterol. Um, yeah, those, I would say those are the main ones that I, at least that I, you know, I take, yeah. But those, you know, those are my baseline, like I was saying. And, you know, even if, you know, other things like working out and, you know, mental health, reading, journaling, things like that. But if you find yourself, even if you do those things regularly, you still gonna have off days, yeah. you know? But it's like, what do you need to do to bounce back from that? You know, like maybe you might need to just rest, you know what I'm saying? Not do anything, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Or talk, get, take an off day, binge watch a show. Like, you know what I'm saying? I don't know how good that is supposed to be mentally, but I like to take binge watch shows, you know what I'm saying? Especially with school. I'll just watch like three shows in a row before I get back to studying for real. Cause I'm like, I gotta, I gotta take it easy. Um, so oh, yeah. What was that? All right. One last episode and I lock in. No, nah, for real though. You know what I'm saying? Cause it's like, I didn't earn, yeah. I didn't been working hard. I earned this time. You know what I'm saying? Like just giving yourself that grace, you know? Um, so that's what, you know, wellness is to me. Just being in tune with yourself, okay. you know? Yeah. So any advice to any, aspiring filmmakers, uh, aspiring medical students who want to get into med school, any mm -hmm. advice, any tips? Yeah, now that's a good question. Um, as far, well, as far as the film goes, uh, I'll say just, you know, jump into it, you know, do your research, uh, look at, you know, equipment that you need. You mentioned that you like, you know, did YouTube video, you looked up some YouTube videos and practice editing with them. Yeah, download that. Yeah, like, YouTube. yeah, so, it, you know, it's just like, just jump in there. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't be scared to, I never done that before. I don't know how to, it's like, you can figure it out. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you want to do it, just just try it out. Um, with med school, I would say it's it's the same thing. Like, definitely jump in there, um, do your research. You know, what, what classes do I need to take? What prerequisites do I need to take? Um, various programs that are available, uh, post-bac programs, masters, things like that. Look into those. Cause getting into med school directly is, is tough, you know. Yeah. Um, I'm actually just finishing up a post back program now, um, and it, it helped me a lot. Yeah. You know, I think it, it gave me, you know, space to uh, learn like how to study science. Yeah. You know, cause I I didn't really do uh, science all throughout undergrad. I did that at the like tail end, but my main focus was philosophy. Okay. Um, cause I switched my major a lot. Um, but philosophy was like, you know, something I was pretty interested in. Um, but I always knew I wanted to do medicine. I just kind of didn't know how, you know. Oh um, so now I'm at that point where I'm like, okay, I'm ready to go into med school, you know. And, you know, based off the work I put in, which I know I'm going to put in that work, I'm going to do well, you know. Um, so, yeah, just. And also, I would say be impatient with the process because med school is, you know, it's, it's not an overnight you don't just get ready for med school overnight. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like you gotta be not only knowing how to study the science, but you gotta be like mentally mature enough. You know what I'm saying? Cause, you gonna say something? 
Oh, what's that one test you guys have to do? The MCAT. MCAT. Yeah. I, yeah, I've that's 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 that. butt, man. It's <laughs> excuse my language, but it's butt. Like, it's it's not it's not a fun test to study for at all. Um, I had to retake mine, and that was because a lot of it was I was rushing the process. I wasn't ready to take it. Like, I took it four times total, um, and the first two times I I was I shouldn't have taken it. The third time, I. I like kind of distracted myself. Like I, I reflected on why I didn't do as well as I should have. And at the end of the day, it was all on me. You know what I'm saying? I couldn't blame anybody for it, um, but it's a very individualized process, okay. you know? So, yeah. All right. uh, one last question about this project. Mm -hmm. um, love the way, like love the direction you're taking it in. For sure. Well, what are some kind of films that we can expect to see uh, years down the line? Yeah. Uh, so. So the kind of the next step I want to do is actually create a podcast for the okay. for the show. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that's like a next step. But as far as films go, I want to I actually want to film myself at some point. Okay. Um, one of my team members for I think he, we're in an Uber in New York drunk, like after we had done got done filming. Like he was like, he was like, bro, like, why you ain't why you ain't making it feel about yourself? Like, you know, because I'm just talking. He like, you got a cool story, man. I'm like, you right. But I'm not ready. You know what I'm saying? I think I think now I'm ready. You know what I'm saying? So I do want to make a film kind of talking about my journey and like my relationship to health and wellness cuz I feel like it's 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 unique, you know. Um it's very individualized, you know, to me. Um and I also want to make film around the world. Okay. You know, cuz it's with it being the infinite steps to health, it's like I got to take this as far as possible. You know what I'm saying? I got to take infinite steps, you know what I'm saying? Around the, the globe to really talking about health and wellness. So I definitely want to do that, um, you know, and just like kind of capture uh, different aspects of like health and wellness and what that looks like for people in different countries. Um, people that don't have, you know, the same resources as here, people that maybe have better resources, you know, or like better medical systems, um, but really capturing you know, the various health and wellness issues and topics that we, you know, need to be aware of, you know? Yeah. No, yeah. I like that. It's, it doesn't really just end here. It's all over the world. I like that. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Said. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, man, if you ever, if you ever need like any, any extra hands for the, for the documentary. For like, sure. Let yeah, me yeah, know. yeah. I'd love to see that process. Yeah, no, for sure. I'm glad we met. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm, for sure. It's been a while since I've like connected with someone who who likes uh, film. Film, yeah, yeah. that's dope. Like the whole process, so mm -hmm. very, very appreciative. Yeah, man, for sure. Same. Uh, but as we round up this episode, uh, feel free to plug any socials, uh, the Ish Project. Mm -hmm. uh, let them know where they can find you. Okay. Uh, any like donation websites that, that people can give you? Let them know. Mm -hmm. Okay, for sure. Uh, so right now, uh, we our website is down. But you can go to Instagram. It is uh, the ish underscore project. Um, that's I S I S H underscore project. Um, and yeah, so if you want to write a check to the ish project, you can just you know sign it to the ish project or or the Infinite Steps to Health project. Um, so yeah, check us out. Send those out. Send those out. Hundred percent. Hey, thank you, man. Yeah, man. Thank you. Appreciate you, man. That's been it, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, sir.